Hello everyone, this is Nick Narzinski with D3 Technologies and welcome to our D3 Tech Tip. So today we're going to take a look at a few different options for creating slots in HSM for Fusion 360. So first thing I've got a setup here that's the same size as my stock. I've got a few half inch diameter slots with some different shapes and first option we're going to look at is just using the slotting operation. So slotting operation is meant to be used when the diameter of your slot is the same diameter as the tool being used to cut it. So I'm going to come in here find my half inch slot, or half inch end mill rather, and we'll just select the bottom edge of a few of these pockets. And you can see what it's going to do there is zigzag following the profile of the slot till it reaches the bottom and then it'll do its its uh, final pass flush with the bottom of the pocket there. So you can also use that to add slots to full uh, full slots when you don't have a closed profile. In other words, like this one here, if I select that edge, you'll see it finds a circle. But all you got to do is pick two concentric or two offset edges, and it will follow in between those two edges. So there you can see it ramps around again until it gets to the bottom, and then it does its final pass. So that's using the slot with ramping down. What if you wanted to pre-drill those positions? We simply want to come in and drill those out first. So I'll go in here, select my half-inch drill bit, Go to the geometry tab. Here it's looking for whole faces initially. If I select that, it doesn't recognize that as a whole infusion, but we can change that to selected points and go ahead and select the bottom edge of different contours. That way it finds the center of those arcs and it'll then drill to, right now the default I have set to the whole bottom, so in other words it's going to go down to that face. So we'll select that and then I'm just going to create that sliding operation again, this time using my half inch end mill. Selecting those same bottom edges of the slots. The trick is we want to go to the linking tab, turn on pre-drilled position to come in the pre-drilled or to enter the part at a pre-drilled position, and then we got to find that using this down here. So I'm just going to simply select that arrow, pick those two points, and then say OK. And so now we should see that that slot enters at the pre-drilled position and then does its arc or the straight line here for the slot. So there's a couple different options. What if we wanted to use a smaller tool and actually ramp around and follow the edge of the slot there? For that, we would want to use 2D Contour. So we can come in here with 2D Contour, and let's do, let's say we already pre-drilled that position. We could select this 3 8 end mill, go to Geometry, select the bottom edge of that slot again, and you could select the top, but I like to select the bottom because it's going to go to the selected contours for our bottom height. So that just saves a step from having to adjust the bottom height there. On the linking tab, what I want to do here is pre drill position again, and I'm simply going to select that arc. And when I do that, I do get a message here. So this is a warning. Anytime you see that, you can right click on it and go to show log. It says cannot use drill position because keep tool down is not activated. So what you do need to do when using 2D Contour is come in here and check this Keep Tool Down, and that will allow it to enter in at that position, lead in, do its contoured pass around the slot, and then come back out. So let's see. The last thing I wanted to show was using 2D Contour, but let's say instead of pre-drilling it, we're going to ramp around following the contour of the slot until we get to the bottom. So for that, again, we use 2D Contour. I'm going to use the same 3 8 inch end mill. Come in here and select the bottom edge of my pockets. And on the linking tab, this time I'm going to turn on ramp. And when we do that and say OK, it will then come in, enter at the top, and ramp its way down to the bottom and then do its finishing pass. We do see a warning here again, and what that warning is for is the lead out is dropped due to linking constraints. So we've got a 3 8 inch tool. If I go here and look at the linking for my lead out, it's the same as the lead in, which in this case has a 90 degree sweep angle with a 0375 radius. So basically what it's saying is there's not enough room if we look at this tool path for it to to do that full link linking movement to get out of the part. At the top it didn't 
matter. It wasn't as critical because you were entering above the part. But at the bottom, we would either need to, to modify those linking movements or just leave it here. It, it did go ahead and trim those passes, it looks like, for us so that we didn't have a collision. So that's what it's saying here as it was dropped. So hopefully that helps and gives you a few more tools in your arsenal. And look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.